This video is powered by As Always Entertainment. If you enjoy this content, consider becoming a patron over on patreon.com forward slash as always for access to the Patreon exclusive podcast, The Kill Connor Clubhouse, early access to the Cinema Room podcast, being a part of polls for future videos, and other early access material. With that said, please enjoy the video. There it is. Far Cry New Dawn is the seventh main installment in the Far Cry franchise, and it stands to reason how this survivalist open world first person shooter has stood the test of time for the better part of two decades. First off, New Dawn is the first iteration of the franchise I have played since Far Cry 4, which I played all of three to four hours of, put down, and then never touched it again. I absolutely love and adore Far Cry 2 and 3, but after playing those few hours of 4, I felt I had seen all the franchise had to offer, and Ubisoft was simply treading on a path they had already gone down several times before. But Ubisoft has continued to make these Far Cry games with holding its core gameplay mechanics in various scenarios, such as Far Cry Primal going back to prehistoric times, and Far Cry 5 taking on a radical cult group that has ravaged a county in central Montana, USA. I had no major interest in revisiting the Far Cry franchise anytime soon, with all I had seen being once again, the same old, same old. So here we are in 2019, and Ubisoft released Far Cry New Dawn, a post-apocalyptic Far Cry set directly after the events of Five in once again Hope County, Montana. But after hearing reports coming out that Far Cry 5 outsold Ubisoft's flagship franchise of Assassin's Creed in 2018 with Odyssey, the question has to arise as to what is Far Cry doing so right? A question that after receiving a review copy of Far Cry New Dawn became one I had action to answer. So I played Far Cry New Dawn, I completed it, and I liked it. Now don't get me wrong, New Dawn's full of flaws and faults, and it is not up to the level I hold Far Cry 2 or 3 to, but nonetheless I find myself with a greater understanding as to what Far Cry are doing right as well as what Ubisoft are doing wrong, not just with Far Cry, but with most of their many major AAA franchises. Interestingly, however, what Far Cry New Dawn started out as was more or less what I expected, a buggy, underdeveloped, grainy looking mess. The NPC's behaviors is absurd, and the enemies run around like headless chickens most of the time. After an hour of playing, I was majorly concerned that Far Cry was not only retreading old territory, but doing it in an unpolished mess of a product. The story has you play as the head of security of Thomas Rush, a man who is known for his building of settlements throughout this post-apocalyptic world. You are being brought to Hope County by Carmina Rye to assist in the development of a settlement when you are attacked by highwaymen, a group led by twins Mickey and Lou who destroy and take over settlements to keep the resources for themselves. It feels very similar to the beginning of most Far Cry games in the sense that you are brought to a new place where you are confronted by the villain, or in this case villains, that are troubling the region. You are then thrown into the defense of the region to reclaim it for the downtrodden. Once you are brought to Prosperity, the main hub area of the game, you are introduced to the main gameplay mechanics. Essentially, the major part of the game's actual gameplay time is spent gathering resources to both build up the settlement of prosperity as well as your gear and equipment. Each location you find throughout the map has a set of material it is rich in, while others like treasure quest areas have puzzles that lead to a loot area where you collect lots of various materials. You can then use these to craft weapons, ammo, and other upgradable materials then using your gear you accumulate to take on harder and harder outposts to gather the most important resource, ethanol. This is used to upgrade prosperity itself, which unlocks you better upgrade materials, higher level weapons and vehicles, and again and again, you see where I'm going with this. Granted, it's a gameplay formula that if you've played even one Ubisoft AAA title in the past 10 years, you're probably familiar with. However, that is what New Dawn does best. As a looter shooter game exploring a post-apocalyptic world, it's one you can find yourself digging hours into as you listen to music or podcasts. Hello everyone, how's it going and welcome back to the Kill Connor Club podcast. New Dawn is a game I was never at any point enthralled in or couldn't put down, but something I definitely had my time enjoying the grind of. In fact, listening to something while playing certainly helped cover up having to listen to the horrendous writing and terrible character interactions I faced during the game. Honestly? Between you and me, my dude? That shit down there is my freaking lifeline. Between you and me, my dude? 
with a forgettable side cast of misfit beta characters that you're expected to believe have survived the harsh terrain of a post-apocalyptic world as experts you meet, as well as the roster of characters you collect in side missions, I found myself just cringing through so much of the writing. Far Cry New Dawn's story is split up into several parts, and once you complete the very forgettable part 1, the game and its stories does start to finally find some ground, focusing less on its gameplay and at least attempting to tell an expansive story with decent characters and consequences. This is when I found the upgrade system got a bit deeper as well, introducing expedition missions where you leave Hope County to somewhere else in the US to collect rare loot for higher level upgrades. I also started facing the elite level outposts and all of a sudden the gameplay got a bit more challenging and quite a bit more rewarding. The game expanded very subtly both mechanically but also as a storyline. It's unfortunate that it took so long to do so, but the game really took its time to show you all it had to offer. The main criticism of that is that the story took such a backseat early on that if I wasn't determined to finish it and write a review of the game, I probably would have put the game down in part 1 and never come back to it. Far Cry New Dawn knows what Far Cry does well, and it puts that at the forefront of the gameplay through 75% of your game time. It uses the looter shooter elements gamers of today seem to love and mix it in with what Far Cry does as a survivalist open world game. What it does so right is focus on not forcing you to do anything, but allowing you to have the experience however you'd like. Opening up more or less the entire map to you from the very start of the game and letting you play the game to run around as a post-apocalyptic world to loot hideouts or craft weapons or take over strongholds or explore everything else the game has to offer. It uses the many tools and features of previous Far Cry games while also taking from other popular franchises of today. But the biggest thing I think Far Cry does is not do too much. Far Cry New Dawn is not a massive game changing experience, not even close. But it doesn't try nor want to be. It just wants to be the next experience in a franchise from a company that always wants you to have a franchise of its bombarding you in the marketplace throughout the year so you'd buy it. And it's working. It doesn't create a big expectation for what's coming next, but leaves you with enough to warrant the next installment happening that will inevitably come. I don't know if I'm at all interested in Far Cry any more as a franchise than I was before playing New Dawn, but I certainly see the tropes of other Ubisoft titles like Assassin's Creed feed into the current structure of Far Cry, both in gameplay and also as a franchise overall. If you're out here looking for just another game to pass the time, Far Cry New Dawn could be the game for you. Otherwise, I, I can't sit here and say that this is a game-changing experience, nor one that even attempts to do so. It's simply another entry in a long-existing franchise that retreads the path it has for many, many years, structuring itself as a franchise that knows what it does well and doesn't stray away from that. This game, in my opinion, is just okay. Make our die gold refine.